Look, are you sick of having to write the same prompt over and over again just to test the effect of a different word or a different aspect ratio? Well, then you have to try this mid-journey feature. It's called permutations, and they're gonna save you so much time while you're experimenting. I'll go over what I use it for most often, some of the trickier things to remember, some drawbacks, and even more advanced ways to use this technique. You know what? Maybe I should start by explaining what permutations are. It's a way to input multiple outcomes into one prompt so that you don't have to type them out individually. And I use this most often for aspect ratios. Let me show you. Let's say I wanted to see a caricature of an angry wolf double exposure. I really don't know what it's gonna make, but I wanna see it in different aspect ratios, like a square, like a vertical, or a landscape. We're gonna start off by writing the aspect ratio parameter, and that's dash dash AR. But now instead of typing one by one, we're gonna input the special permutation command, and that is the squiggly bracket. And let me clarify, we need a space after the AR, so dash dash AR space squiggly bracket, and inside of this squiggly bracket is where we can write the different outcomes we're looking for. So we start with one by one, but then if we want two by three, we separate them with a comma. And then we want 16 by nine, so we're gonna input another comma. And then when we're done, we're gonna close it with another squiggly bracket. Now watch when I hit enter. It's going to ask us if we want to imagine three prompts. If you're curious about which prompts are gonna be created, you can click here at show prompts, AR one by one, two by three, and 16 by nine. Please ignore those 16 by nines at the end of each prompt. That's a part of my suffix, so that anytime I write a prompt, I don't have to include an aspect ratio, 16 by nine will get automatically included. However, when you manually input an aspect ratio like we just did, it will appear first in the prompt and take precedent. So don't worry about what comes after. And after checking the prompts, if you realize you've made a mistake, you can click here at edit template. The prompt box will appear and you can make any adjustments you need. When you're ready, you can click yes and have your generations created. I will say now though, that using permutations will probably eat up your fast hours pretty quickly. But I think the point is, is that when you're experimenting and you know you're gonna write all of these prompts anyways, you might as well write them all at once. It's just gonna save you time in the long run. And then here we go, these are pretty cool. I didn't quite know what double exposure was going to do, but I thought it might add something to the prompt. Ah, those are pretty sick. I like number one a lot. Number four as well, and number three too. Those are good. Not even bad in the square ratio. And you can see that they're a little different from ratio to ratio. And that's why something like permutations comes in handy, because you can get a feel for the actual prompt very quickly. Another one of my favorite ways to use permutations is for stylized and chaos values. And for old time's sake, let's jump into some neon Batman. And then you write the stylize normally dash dash s, try 0, 100, 500, 1000. And if you really want to know the effect of the stylize, we can keep the same seed number. Stylize 0 is going to follow your prompt quite literally. At the default, this is what you get. Oh, number 4 is awesome. 500, okay, mid journey is getting its own creative freedom. And 1000, yeah, that's about what we'd expect. There's really not a big difference between the high stylized values. But how about chaos? Let's see what we get. Chaos is gonna give you more variety within the initial grid, and zero is the default. So that's why here we get the exact same result as the stylized 100 previously. It's just what happens at that seed. C10 at this seed didn't really seem to change that much. It changed it a little. Okay, we're starting to expand a little. Number two is different. C40, getting strange. I do like them though. And C100, absolutely unpredictable. This is so funny. We've got we got a cowboy, a green head, whatever this thing is, and this guy over here. Like, mid-journey is hilarious. But let's move on. What else can we use permutations for? Well, another thing I like to do is test out different colors. And this might come through at the beginning of a prompt. And it'll look something like this. Red, blue, pastel, purple love, poetry in motion. And when we hit enter, we're gonna see those different colors applied. Red love, blue love, pastel love, purple love. This would work really well for designs like sticker art or t-shirt designs, or maybe just the clothing of a character. Again, if you know you're gonna be looking for these things, you might as well look all at once. There's the red, pastel, oh, that's lovely. I like those shades of blue. I think number three is a really cool picture. And purple worked out as well. Number one is great. Number two is also very pretty. 
And actually, there's one other way to use permutations that I find myself using a lot, and that's to test out different art styles. And I will note that this is another example where using a fixed seed might come in handy. So let's try a, a mailbox at the end of a country road, and then we're going to put a comma, and then the different art styles we might want to see this prompt in. Pencil sketch, watercolor, clay sculpture, unreal engine render, unsplash and then a seed number so that we can see the differences that these art styles will bring to the prompt. You can hit show prompt to make sure everything's correct so you don't waste any fast hours. But there's our pencil sketch. I think those are unreal. Clay sculpture is interesting. I think number three is really pretty. The unreal engine render, not quite what I was expecting. Watercolor. I wouldn't even say these really look watercolor, but they're certainly beautiful. And unsplash brings that real cinematic vibe to each photo. And Shout out to this mailbox sitting in the middle of the road. That's a little impractical. And I just wanted to say that if you want a better look at some of my pictures, you can follow me on Instagram at Future Tech Pilot. Now for another batch of ways that you can use permutations. I think these will all come in handy. And the first we can talk about is testing different seeds. Let's go something with a little more strange, like an abstract representation of an eagle. I don't know what that's gonna make. Thick brush strokes, line art, acrylic, and pasto. Again, I don't really know what this is gonna do, so let's test it out on a few different seeds. And the way we do that is by typing the seed parameter normally, dash dash seed, and then we're gonna hit the squiggly bracket. And now is where we just get to type in random numbers. You know what, let's try seed number one. We'll try seed number 100, 1000, 10,000, and then blah, blah, blah. Seed number one brought a peacock in. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Seed 100, okay. Okay, this prompt's not the greatest, but we're seeing what it can do. 1,000 is interesting. I like number four a lot, and three's pretty cool. 10,000, take a look at number one. That's unreal. And then blah, 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 look at it. <laughs> Why is there a wolf? I don't know. But that just goes to show you how you could test multiple seeds at once. And maybe this is a way of finding a specific seed number that you happen to like. I personally don't think a seed number really matters across a bunch of different prompts, but I know there are some people who disagree with me, so I'll leave that up to you. Now here's what I think is probably the most important way to use permutations, and that is to test out a specific word one word in particular. Now that word can be whatever you want, but you're able to see how it directly changes your prompt. And you know what? Let's go back to that example of the caricature of the wolf. I think that'll work well here. Caricature of an angry wolf, comma. Then even though we're only going to test one word, we're still going to put it in the brackets. And I want to see, did double exposure really do anything? Now the key here is to put a comma as if we were going to put another word, but then we're going to include an extra comma. That's the key. I also suggest choosing a seed number so you can really tell the difference. Now when you go to show the prompts you'll see here we get one prompt with double exposure and one prompt without it and that all comes from the two commas inside of the permutations. Word, comma, comma will let you see the prompt with that word and without that word. I hope I'm making that clear. Now I would say this extra comma here is okay, it's not really going to change that much. I know it's kind of unpleasant to look at, but as far as I know, there's no way to really change that. Let me know if I'm missing something. Anyways, now that we're generating the pictures, we can see exactly what double exposure did to the prompt, especially because we kept the same seed number. So here's the caricature of an angry wolf at seed 850385. And these are cool, but now let's see what double exposure does to the prompt. Ooh, whoa, more goosebumps. Like, look at these. I think it added a lot of color that you see or at least that illusion of color and considering these were made on the exact same seed number that tells you a lot and again i'll reiterate you could type these out one at a time one prompt after the other but why do that when you can test it just inside of one prompt i'm telling you this is going to save you so much time while you're exploring and this will help you validate some of your ideas or instincts with regards to which words affect a prompt. But now let's go back to a previous example for this next tip. In particular, these art styles. The subject doesn't really matter, so let's change that up. Let's go with dramatic superhero fight scene. But now let's say we want some more words incorporated into our art styles, like pencil sketch, rough drawing. How do we include that? Because we don't want it to say pencil sketch, rough drawing. We want it to be pencil sketch, comma, rough 
off drawing. But how do we do that? How do we add commas and multiple words within each art style when we know that commas separate it into different prompts? Well, there's one trick you need to know about, and that is using a backslash. So if we have pencil sketch backslash comma rough drawing, that is going to keep those as one prompt. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'll show you after when we show the prompts. But let's add some more words to the other styles. Want watercolor neon line art, play sculpture, vibrant play-doh, then for unreal render we're going to use Ultra HD 4K cinematic lighting. Just some fun words that, you know, they don't really do much, but this is to prove a point. Now, when we hit enter, we're going to have the same five prompts, but when we show the prompts, you'll see that we managed to add more words inside of the permutation. Just one comma will separate them into different prompts. Backslash comma will let you add more words inside of that particular permutation. Again, I hope I'm making that clear. It's a little weird to wrap your head around. Leave some feedback in the comments below. Let me know how I'm doing. Thanks. But let's see how these turn out. I mean, I'm excited. Ah, these are sick, man. Oh, I love that so much. What a great combo. Yeah, okay, these are pretty cool. I guess it worked out. Vibrant Play-Doh seemed to help. The rough drawing of a pencil sketch. Pretty cool, I think. Oh, man. Maybe Ultra HD 4K cinematic lighting really does help. I mean, look at number one, look at number four. Those are crazy. And then, of course, Unsplash, just always going to be my fave. Doesn't need any extra help. Now, if you found any of this useful so far, hit that like button so we can share it with more people. Thanks. It helps out the channel a lot. Now, this is going to be sort of a master class because there are a few more things that you need to know. Using multiple permutations inside of one prompt is going to work like multiplication. And this is the easiest to understand when we want to see different stylized, chaos, and aspect ratios. Let's try tuna on toast. Then we're going to ask for two different stylized values, two different chaos values, and three different aspect ratios. Now when we hit enter, it's going to be for 12 different prompts. And that's because we have the two stylized values multiplied by the two chaos values. Two times two is four. And then we're going to take that and we're going to multiply that by the three different aspect ratios. Four times three is 12. That's how it adds up. And it can add up pretty quickly. Like just adding one more stylized or one more chaos value would be a whole nother six prompts. It would go from 12 to 18. And while these are generating, this might be a good time to point out some drawbacks. You can't use this in relax mode. This eats your fast hours and your fast hours only. And the other thing is that you can only have three concurrent jobs on the standard plan. So out of those 12 prompts, three could start, but then one would have to finish before another joins. Nine of the prompts would be waiting in a queue. On the pro plan, you get 12 concurrent fast jobs, and that's why permutations can go really fast. You want to see some tuna on toast? Yeah, okay, these are fine. Uh, I'm going to be a fan anytime a tuna actually shows up. Oh yeah, that's 40 C20. <laughs> these are oh, these are awful. Uh, that number one is pretty cool. And I guess number three looks pretty delicious, although I prefer my tuna cook. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad with the random scary looking tuna, sure. Yeah, these are kind of cool. Oh, these are pretty. Oh, why is the cat there? Okay, more food. Okay, you get the point. These prompts will add up fast when you combine multiple permutations inside of one prompt. Here's something I wanted to try. Can you add permutations in a multi-prompt? I'm thinking for different weight values. Let's try the classic hot dog prompt. Hot one, two, dog one, two. Do you think this will work? I think it will. Oh my God, that is so so fast that is so much better than having to type those weights out individually in different prompts. Now oh, just think about how fast you could experiment, especially with the new custom image weights. You could have four pictures and then you could put the weights in the permutations and see so many unique photos. Oh, that's amazing. Hot dog. Hot one, dog two, <laughs> these are cool. I think two, two is the same as one, one, so whatever. And then hot two, dog one. I don't know, but that's an amazing way to use permutations. I will say this, if you're interested in a specific permutation, like maybe stylized values or aspect ratios, I mean, if you find yourself using those often, you can add that as a suffix if you're feeling extra spicy. Forward slash prefer suffix. We'll go new value, S, we'll try 40, 100, 300. 40, 100, 300. Now, anytime we write a prompt, that permutation will show up at the end of the prompt and it will run automatically without having to write that out each time. Now, I really only recommend that if you know you're gonna be experimenting with it often. I just have to point that out. And let me show you, we'll go mermaid on the beach. 
and then automatically it's going to give us those three options inside the permutation. Again, really big time save right there. Oh, I see these came out squared because when I changed the suffix, I removed the 16 by 9 that was already there. I like these. Oh, S40 is, yeah, that's kind of cool. Different, pretty in a different way. And 300 is awesome and there's another thing you can do if you're wondering how different algorithms would interpret your prompt you can use permutations for that as well quantum computer matrix evolution we're gonna go dash dash v and we can see it in versions 3 4 5.1 5.2 there's version 3 you know not the best but great for its time version 4 okay it kind of turns it into a computer and then we have 5.1 I think those are beautiful. And 5.2. There is a difference. Now this might be a good time to let you all know that I've made a new prompt pack. And it's all made with version 5.1 of Mid Journey. I know that's not the newest version, but prompts can change pretty drastically. And I personally am a fan of the older versions for certain things. For anyone watching, you can get it right now for $11.99 on my website. But the price will be increasing next month. So make sure you grab it now if you're interested. Now I wanted to bring something else up. If you have anything on your mind that you'd like me to discuss, us, please check out the form in the description. You can share your thoughts there and I'll talk about it on my podcast. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're interested in more ways of saving time, make sure you check out this video here on setting shortcuts. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.